Once you get excited about personal finance and investing, you may find out that not everyone shares your excitement at first. This shouldn't be too much of a problem unless the person happens to be your significant other. In this video, I'm going to show you the surprisingly simple strategy that I used to turn my girlfriend from a skeptic to investor in just 24 days. I have been interested in personal finance and investing for over a decade and have been investing since I got my first proper paycheck in 2013. Over that time, investing has become a natural part of my routines. But this was not the case with my girlfriend when we started dating. She was already great with money, but investing was not something that she was yet comfortable with. As I'm generally enthusiastic about investing, I had been talking about it to her probably more than she would have wanted to hear. She would listen to my stories, but I could still tell that the final spark was missing. I could have spent more time talking about the importance of investing compound interest or Warren Buffett, but I doubt that this would have brought me much further. This is because the best way for someone to actually learn something is to experience it themselves. You can for example tell someone that touching a hot stove will hurt, but most likely they will still need to touch that at least once to really understand that it will hurt. But my issue was, how could I get her experience investing if she doesn't feel comfortable to start investing? Catch 22. Also, the timing was getting critical. She was just about to graduate from the university by the end of the year and start her new job in January. I knew if she could learn the monthly routine of investing right away, investing would become a natural part of her habits. Perfect window of opportunity. But I did not have any idea how to solve it. It was right around Christmas time, only a few days before the beginning of December. I was in the nearby supermarket, heading down the Christmas aisle. The Christmas songs were playing in the background and there were decorations all around me. I'm normally not a huge fan of Christmas or decorations, but my girlfriend is. And that's why I had promised her to make a Christmas calendar this year. When I was a kid, my parents used to make me and my brother a Christmas calendar. They would fill 24 little pouches with different kind of Christmas goodies that we would get to open as the days went by. This is what I wanted to do her as well, and also the reason why I was now strolling down the Christmas aisle. I already had a few different kinds of chocolate chocolates in my basket when I noticed a bag of marshmallows. The marshmallows reminded me of the Stanford Marshmallow Experiment. This was a study done in the 70s where researchers tested children's ability to cope with delayed gratification. In short, the researchers gave children a choice between getting a marshmallow right away or waiting for 15 minutes for a larger reward. This gave me an idea. The idea was rather simple. I would combine Christmas calendar and investing. I would get a few bags of marshmallows, fill the Christmas calendar with some of them and leave some marshmallows as a reserve. I planned to set up a plate that I would label investments on the kitchen table. Then I would give my girlfriend the following options. You can eat all the marshmallows right away or you can invest them and earn interest for them the following day. The rules would be simple. One, for every marshmallow on the plate, you would get 10% return on the following morning. Two, if the interest would be less than one marshmallow, I would still pay a one full marshmallow as an interest. And three, when rounding up or down, the interest would be rounded to close full number. That is, a fraction below 0.5 would be rounded down and a fraction equal or over 0.5 would be rounded up. Simple and effective. All she needs to do is to choose every day how many marshmallows she wants to eat. After finalizing the idea and rules, it was time to fill the calendar. I decided to put in each pouch between one to three marshmallows. There were two main reasons for this. First, I only had so many marshmallows and would need some of them as a reserve for the interest. And second, the calendar pouches would not fit more marshmallows anyways. To make the allocation of the marshmallows more random, I decided to use a dice to decide how to fill the little pouches. The rules for the dice were the following. Numbers 1, 2, 3 would equal one marshmallow. Numbers 4 and 5 would equal two marshmallows and six would equal three marshmallows. This way, based on the probabilities, the majority of the pouches should have one marshmallow, some of them would have two, and only a few would have three marshmallows. At this point, I want to note one thing. If Christmas is the time of the year for your significant other, I suggest you put also other items in the pouches just to keep the holiday spirits up. Then came the 1st of December. It was time to open the first door of the Christmas calendar. I had told my girlfriend that I had made a Christmas calendar for her, but I had kept my investment plan a complete secret. I had hanged the Christmas calendar in my bedroom just above the bed, so it would be quick to open right after waking up. I remember how my girlfriend jumped out of the bed that morning, excited to open the first calendar door. But as she reached to open the first door, emptied it and saw the marshmallows, the look on her face changed quickly. She was looking confused, as she was for sure was expecting something more Christmassy from the first pouch. So, it was time for me to explain the rules for the calendar. I told her that she had two alternatives. 
she could either eat the marshmallows right away as a normal Christmas calendar, or she could play a game. If she didn't eat the marshmallows and put them on the plate that I had labeled investments, she would earn 10% return the following day. I could tell based on the long silence and the look on her face that she was not convinced. But she still decided to play along and put the marshmallows on the investments. The following morning, after we woke up, I went to see if the marshmallows were still there on the investment plate. I found out that none of the marshmallows had mysteriously disappeared over the night, so it was time to pay the first interest. One marshmallow. I think I could see a little smile on her face when she got the extra marshmallow, but I could still sense that the general feeling was quite skeptical. As a positive surprise to me, she still decided to continue the game and put the second day's marshmallows in the investments as well. As the first days of December went by and even though the pile of marshmallows grow, I could still see that the skepticism remained. It was about day 16 when I realized that I had made a mistake. Originally, I had expected that my girlfriend would eat at least some of the marshmallows, but I had underestimated her. She had been investing every single marshmallow as well as interest from every single day. I realized that at this rate, the number of marshmallows I had reserved for the calendar were not going to last until Christmas. I was about to go bankrupt. This meant that I had only one option left. I had to go back to the supermarket to get more marshmallows. Then something changed in her. She became more eager to wake up the next day and the first thing to do in the morning was to count how much interest she would be getting that day. The spark had appeared in her eyes and the smile was getting wider and wider as I had to pay more and more marshmallows to her investments. My girlfriend continued the same track, investing everything until Christmas Eve. When the Christmas Eve finally arrived, it was time to open the last pouch and pay the last interest on her investments and see the results. The amount of marshmallows I had to pay her surprised even myself. This was once again a good reminder on the power of compound interest, or the eight wonder of the world as Albert Einstein has allegedly said. Things get even more interesting when we compare three different investment strategies. One, eating everything right away. Two, eating only the interest. Or three, as my girlfriend did, invest everything. For this comparison, I calculated the total amount of marshmallows each strategy would have given her. If she would have eaten all the marshmallows right away, she would have only gotten 35 marshmallows in total. On the other hand, if she would have only eaten the interest payment, she would have eaten 45 marshmallows during the period and had additional 35 marshmallows at the Christmas Eve, so a total of 80 marshmallows. By using her strategy to invest everything, she was not able to eat any marshmallows during the period until Christmas Eve. But as she let them compound, the results were staggering. On the Christmas Eve, she got a whooping total of 155 marshmallows, over four times more than eating them right away and almost double versus eating only the interest. But as in the Stanford marshmallow experiment, the number of marshmallows were not the key point. The key was behavior change. In the short span of 24 days, I could see my girlfriend transforming from a person that was a bit skeptical about investing to one excited about it. I'm sure that telling her more about ETFs, compound interest or Tesla stock would not have helped the same way as few bags of marshmallows did. Now she was able to experience the effect of compound interest firsthand in a safe environment. She told me afterwards that at first she thought that the calendar was quite stupid. But after a while it became the final push she needed to actually take the leap and change her mind about investing. And about a month later, after starting her new job, she opened her first investment account and started investing.